Welcome back to uh, Imperial College and uh, with me is uh, Dr. Nick Linton. He's an electrophysiologist, but currently uh, that's not what he's doing a lot of the time. Uh, we're trying to manage the COVID response and uh, Nick was tasked with the strange uh, idea of how we manage an increasing number of COVID patients coming into our hospital. So Nick, what did you do? Well, I think the first thing that's really important is to have this concept of zones. So if a patient is positive, they've got to be in a positive zone, which is not just the bed or the bay. It includes the loo area, kitchen and all facilities. Once you've decided that, um, then it's a real advantage to try and use some flexibility. And in order to look for those opportunities, it's helpful to get the plans of the hospital and then to work out if somewhere has two entrances, then you can have a dirty entrance and a clean entrance. And then the spaces in between can flex in order to allow the green and the red zones to have different uh, relative areas. So that as more COVID patients come in, the red zone expands. And then hopefully as we come to the tail end of it, it can then shrink again, getting you back to normal. Okay, so perhaps the key facet of that is what's the what's the barrier between the red and the green if it's not entire ward that is red or green? So um, what we have used is uh, big plastic barriers, and uh, so basically uh, like a curtain but made out of plastic with signs on, <clears throat> and we have two in in uh, in series, um, and we rely on educating people so that they don't budge through. Okay, so just as the same as, as we have double doors where we say no entrance, we have a, a screen that says no entrance. Okay, so you're blocking a physical person going through. How about that tiny little virus uh, and aerosols? How are you preventing those going through a plastic barrier? So uh, our specific wards have double doors on the base, and then we are wherever possible using a double door, a physical double door. But if we need to have the flexibility then we will use the plastic barriers and we use space. So we have two plastic barriers separated by a few metres. Uh, and it is imperfect, but we have to be realistic. We have to use what we have and uh, use it for the best of, of, of the, use the resources to the best ability to look after the patient. And is there, is there, a, is there some evidence base about what the right distance is between the barriers to try and stop droplets uh, travelling? Well, I mean, the evidence for social distancing is two metres and we've done significantly better than the two metres. But I think that it is an area where we need to collect evidence and it's something that we need more research on going beyond COVID. We, we didn't do it for SARS and now we're paying the, the price. Thanks very much.